Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, I have people visit me from uh, other countries sometimes, uh, and they come to my club in London, and they often ask me what are the places worth visiting with arms and armour weapons in, in London. Um, and so there's a few places that I would highly recommend you visit. Um, there aren't uh, a huge number, but, um, but there's some very good ones, okay? So the first one I would recommend is the Wallace Collection. Uh, the Wallace Collection is located near Bond Street Station uh, in the centre of London, just off uh, Oxford Street, and it's on Manchester Square, and it's um, got basically one of the best collections of medieval and renaissance arms and armour pretty much uh, in the world, actually, I would say. Um, and additionally to that, it's also got one of the best collections of Indo-Persian uh, weapons and armour um, in the world. Uh, it's not huge by any means. There are other things you can see there, like furniture and clocks and stuff, if that takes your fancy. But the armouries, there are four rooms of armoury, um, and they're not huge, but the quality of what they have there and the variety is really, really excellent. Okay, And it's free, of course, to go in, as all museums, uh, all of the main museums are in, in London. Okay, So that's the Wallace Collection, firstly. Next up is the National Army Museum. Now the National Army Museum is actually closed at the moment, that is that at the moment being October 2014. It's due to open I believe in, uh, in late 2015 again and it was having a complete refit. Now on one hand that's a bad thing because I miss being able to go there, but on the other hand that's a really good thing because they actually uh, for the last uh, 30 or 40 years have only had a relatively small percentage of their collection on display. Um, and they're going to have a much larger variety uh, of stuff on display and a larger proportion of stuff on display once they reopen. So that's really, really good. Um, so the National Army Museum, and that focuses really on kind of English Civil War and after, with a particular focus, I would say, on the 18th, 19th uh, and uh, 20th centuries up until World, World War II. Okay. Um, next up is the uh, Foot Guards Museum. That's on uh, Birdcage Walk. Um, and that's uh, it's dedicated to the foot guards, that being the Coldstream Guards, Grenadier Guards, Scots Guards, Welsh Guards, and um, it's uh, a quite narrow time period in scope. It kind of goes from the Napoleonic period. Um, it does go up to modern, but it kind of has a focus on Napoleonic to World War Two, I would say, World War One, World War Two. Um, and it, again, it's not a big museum, but it's got some interesting things, uh, and it's worth visiting. There is, I believe, a small charge to visit uh, the Foot Guards Museum. It's a few pounds. Uh, the other one is the Horse Guards Museum, which is just up the road, which is in Horse Guards, um, which is just off Whitehall uh, in the centre of London, just by Trafalgar Square. Um, and the Horse Guards Museum is much like the Foot Guards Museum, but focused on the, uh, the Horse Guards, and again, it's a few pounds to get in. Uh, and they've got some interesting things there as well. I personally prefer the Foot Guards Museum. I, I think it has more stuff to look at than the Horse Guards Museum does. Um, but they're both worth a visit and they're both within short, uh, short walk of each other. Um, and of course, when you pay your fee, you're helping them to keep the museum going. Okay, uh, next, <coughs> next up is um, the Imperial War Museum. The Imper Imperial War Museum actually focuses really on kind of mostly World War Two and after. There, it does have a good World War One exhibits, however, um, I went there recently and they've kind of refitted the whole of the Imperial War Museum. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of the refit at all. I think it's uh, terribly laid out now, unfortunately. Um, and it seems like you have to uh, obtain some kind of ticket to get into the World War One part and they only have a certain number of tickets per day, which seems like a very stupid arrangement to me. So overall, I'm not a fan of the Imperial War Museum. Also, it's a bit later than my main uh, sphere of interest. And next up, of course, we have the Tower of London. The Tower of London uh, being still an official royal residence, it's relatively expensive to get into, but it is, of course, fascinating. You've got uh, the crown jewels in there, as well as a proportion of, or small proportion of the collection of the Royal Armouries. The main Royal Armouries was moved up to Leeds uh, about uh, 10 years ago, if I remember correctly. Um, but they maintain a small collection of arms and armour down in the Tower of London. But of course the Tower of London is uh, London's main medieval castle that's still standing. Um, there were a couple of others but they're no longer there. Um, and so it's very worth visiting from many uh, points of view. Well, well worth a visit. Um, so there we go. They're the main uh, collections that I would recommend. Oh, and the other one I must not forget. So one of the best ones of all, in fact, is the Museum of London. 
And the Museum of, Museum of London gets, I think, often overlooked, especially by um, arms and armour people. And so most of the ones I've mentioned so far are, OK, we've got the Wallace Collection has a good collection of medieval and renaissance stuff. Pretty much all of the other London collections are focused more on kind of the middle of the 17th century onwards, mostly 18th, 19th, 20th century. Uh, but the Museum of London is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. It focuses on everything from prehistory right the way through in fact, the modern times, but in terms of their the weapons they've got there, really up to the medieval period, and it pretty much stops at in the sixteenth beginning of the sixteenth century. Um, and the Museum of London has basically the best collection of bronze swords that I'm aware of anywhere in the world. Now, I've never been to um, I've never been to Athens, for example. There might be some really good collections of uh, bronze weapons in um, in. Italy and Greece, I don't know, but of all the collections I've ever been to, Museum of London is by far and away the best. They have tons of bronze swords, bronze spears, shields, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so really fantastic for Bronze Age stuff. And um, and also for uh, kind of what we call Dark Age, so the kind of Anglo-Saxon to Viking period and early Middle Ages, um, they've got a fantastic collection of um, uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, sword shields, helmets, and of course bits of helmet, and also um, Viking period axes, swords, shield bosses, saxes, everything you can think of. So uh, and bits of mail even, really really good on that front. Um, and they do have a fair collection of uh, kind of um, what we typically call medieval um, uh, period weapons as well. Uh, swords, daggers um, and buckler, they've got a very interesting buckler uh, and some bits of, little remnant bits of armour. And last one to mention, uh, the big one, the most famous of all, is the British Museum. And the British Museum essentially has something of everything. Uh, of course, actually, the British Museum's collection is far bigger than they can ever uh, ever show within within their galleries because they just don't have space for it. Now, interestingly, to me anyway, the uh, I think the British Museum's got a particularly poor uh, late medieval um, collection. Okay, after after about uh, 1100, 1200, their collection of stuff I think is a bit rubbish. Um, you're far better going to the Wallace collection or indeed to the Museum of London. However, for uh, ancient world, uh, Greek and Roman, uh, and indeed of course Egyptian, Babylonian, and everything else, right the way through to the kind of Anglo-Saxon Viking period, they've got tons of stuff and very interesting stuff. Uh, so there we go. I would say. Uh, my um, three top recommended museums, therefore, for kind of earlier period arms and armour are um, the British Museum, the uh, Museum of London and the Wallace Collection. And then for later period stuff, I would recommend the National Army Museum when it reopens, uh, far above and everything else. Uh, the National Army Museum and the two guards museums are, w are worth a visit, although th I do warn you they are quite small. And I'm not a fan of the Imperial War Museum, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, cheers.